Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead and in this video we're going to talk about how things are going on the Three Rivers Challenge. This is the pantry challenge that I'm doing in the month of June. I'm not spending any money at the grocery store and we're just eating what we have available. And as you can see the garden is really starting to take off so that is wonderful because more vegetables and fruits and things are starting to become available for us to use in our meals. But a lot of the meals are really kind of looking uh, the same lately, just whatever fresh veggies we have available from the garden, lots of eggs, lots of our grilled homegrown meat that we have in the freezers. We are grateful for all of it, but it doesn't make for very interesting um, videos here. So let me give you an idea of what breakfasts have been looking like. I picked some potatoes here, some new potatoes from the garden just to kind of check on the size of them. And then I went out and I grabbed some rainbow chard. One of my favorite ways to eat chard is to just saute it and have it with eggs in the morning for breakfast. The children seem to like that. So that is how we are going to use this up for this meal that I'm about to show you. So grateful for the fresh greens. And then as I mentioned, we just have an abundance of eggs right now um, with the summer solstice happening over the last week. The maximum number of daylight hours that we have um, during the year, that just means the chickens are producing like crazy. And I'm extremely grateful for it. And that means we're having eggs for every breakfast of the week. So like I said, I just decided to test out some of those potatoes to see the size and they still have some growing to do. So we only pulled up two plants, but it was enough then to produce a little breakfast for us. So I'm going to start preparing this breakfast by washing our greens here and we're going to chop them up pretty finely. Uh, my children actually like these greens if they're sauteed. They they taste great, fresh. They're nice and sweet when you when you cook them up and they really seem to enjoy them. We have lots of garlic scapes in the fridge. I harvested those and showed you them in the last video. And we're still working on using up those fresh scapes, adding them to whatever meal in any way that we can. Just gonna crack my eggs here. A typical breakfast for my children, we'll do anywhere you know, around a dozen eggs or so for a meal for the children. If we're adding other bulk, if it's just plain scrambled eggs, It'll be anywhere uh, between 16 to 20 eggs. But since we're adding other stuff on this day, we are just doing about a dozen eggs. Adding a little salt and pepper with those greens, putting the eggs and just mixing it all together. Next step, we're going to get our potatoes prepared. And I'm just chopping these up, kind of dicing them. I am um, going to cook this breakfast outside on our camp stove. We have a griddle that sits over a propane stove, and I love cooking outside, especially for breakfast. It's a great way to start the day. The children usually are asleep when I start prepping the food, and I go out to cook, and I have my mug of hot tea, and I just get busy cooking breakfast out there, listening to the birds and the chickens waking up and everything that's going on outside it's it's just wonderful there's something very primal i think about cooking a meal outside it just feels right it feels good it's more fun than cooking inside i decided to pull out a little bit of bacon and chop that up and add that to our egg mixture just to increase the protein content of this meal and there we go i got my griddle nice and greasy and like i said we're gonna cook this up outside in the fresh air, the sun's rising, the birds are chirping, and it's just a beautiful morning here in Ohio. I love having a summer kitchen. We have several ways that we can cook food outdoors. It just keeps the mess outside. It keeps the heat outside. I'm using less dishes because when I'm done, all I have to clean off is this griddle instead of having to clean several pots and pans inside in the sink. And uh, it's just... Like I said, it's a great way to start the day. So if you don't have a kind of a summer kitchen setup, you need to do yourself a favor and get that going. It'll come in really handy once canning season begins and I could do my canning out here and not heat my kitchen up during the month of August. We don't have central air, so um, sometimes canning season, it can get pretty hot inside if, if I try to do my canning indoors. So there we go, we've got our egg mixture We've got our potatoes, a nice homegrown meal. Of course, the kids want a little ketchup on top of it to um, 
make it to their liking and they love that look here's my five-year-old son just devouring his chard fresh from the garden he loves it so that is an example of the breakfast that we've been eating I'm gonna get busy now cleaning duck eggs so we had very little rain over the last month it's only rained a couple days and that means our chicken eggs are perfectly clean so I tend to default to using the chicken eggs our duck eggs they just like to lay eggs outside they don't use nesting boxes just sometimes I think they try to lay them in mud puddles or something so the duck eggs come into the house very dirty and they tend to accumulate so I'm just taking a chance here to clean my duck eggs we have pecan and ruined ducks they're dual purpose ducks we raise them for meat and also for eggs they lay pretty consistently an egg a day through the spring and summer um, and then they tend to stop laying and don't lay any eggs through the fall and winter so we enjoy them. They're great. The mama hens go broody quite often and will hatch out their own ducklings. That provides a great meat source. And um, yeah, we like the duck eggs for baking. We're not the biggest fan for um, breakfast though. Speaking of rain, we're finally getting uh, some more rain this week. And that means that the mulberries on the trees are going to fall off as the raindrops hit them. And so we're going outside and trying to salvage as many of these mulberries off of the trees before they fall onto the ground and the critters get them instead. So um, in my last video, I was showing you guys some of the things that we do with mulberries. We were harvesting them and I made some mulberry dairy-free ice cream. We're gonna harvest some here on this day and make a dessert out of them. Once again, I'm gonna make a fruit cobbler using the fresh mulberries but mulberries are delicious and my little boys are doing a terrible job though <laughs> of harvesting them for me they eat them faster than I can get them in the bowl so we're not doing much mulberry preserving we're just lucky to get enough to make a meal <laughs> but they sure love them and the mulberries are so good for them fresh so I don't mind them eating them while I'm working you can see we have some white mulberries that are kind of a light purple, and then we have the regular traditional mulberries on our trees. We're also doing some other foraging on this day. These are elderflowers. Elderberries um, will, after these flowers are pollinated, elderberries will form right here. But you can also harvest the flowers, and they have a very distinct and pleasant smell. It smells like summer, like happiness. I can't even describe it. Um, and so we're going to harvest some of that and we're going to make some jelly out of it, but we're also going to add clover. We're actually hunting for the flowers here and we should have done this a couple days before they had just the men folk in our house had come through and mowed all of this. And so there aren't a ton of clover flowers available, but we are picking what we can. Clover is really good for you, um, particularly red clover, but white clover as well. It's good for your blood. It helps with circulation, all sorts of things. And a lot of people like to harvest it to use in tea. And I have heard that if you make jelly out of it, it tastes just like honey. So that is the point of harvesting it. We are going to mix together this clover with the elderflower and make a really sweet honey elderflower flavored jelly and I think it's going to be delicious little Levi there was just looking at some yarrow <laughs> got lots of things growing wild to forage this time of year and it's so fun to make little treats in the kitchen out of it so let's get busy doing that here we have our clover it's not a ton just a couple cups maybe two cups of clover flowers and then we have our heads of the elderflower I had them soaking for quite a while we're just working on making sure we get any debris um, that could be in the flowers there kind of off of them we'll kind of work them around in the water and then drain them out since this is the first time i'm going to be making this jelly we're going to do a small batch i'm just putting about four and a half cups of water here with the flowers and we're just simmering them on the stove for about 10 minutes and the smell is just amazing those elder flowers it's just overpowering and just so lovely um, if you've never smelled elderflower you really need to try it you can make cordials all sorts of little delicacies out of these flowers so now we're straining that out to get the juice and we're gonna make a jelly out of this juice you can see it's a really unappetizing <laughs> greenish brownish color and that's gonna change when we add our lemon juice 
to this. It's going to turn it a golden yellow. So don't worry. Right now it looks kind of nasty, but it'll get better. Trust the process. We're going to put that back on the stove and we're going to get busy with our other ingredients. I have a fourth a cup here of lemon juice. We're adding that to the liquid and then we're using Pomona's pectin. So we need to add a calcium water that comes with the Pomona's pectin. And I'm going to add four teaspoons of calcium water in with the liquids. Now I have a cup of sugar that I'm putting in a bowl and we're going to add four teaspoons of Pomona's pectin. Monus pectin is a pectin that allows you to do low sugar recipes. So in this entire jelly batch, there's only one cup of sugar, which is wonderful. Many traditional jellies might call for six or seven cups of sugar for this same amount of jelly. So I mix that into the boiling liquids, stir it around for another couple of minutes, and then we're going to get this off the heat and get our jars filled. So this is what it looks like after it's boiling. I just need to get my funnel out in my jars and we're going to fill them. I'm actually going to use a strainer you'll see as I'm filling my jars because some of my pectin kind of clumped up a little bit and that's okay. It will still gel. I've had this happen before and it was no problem. We got five little half pints out of this recipe and you guys, this smells so wonderful. I wish that you had smell-o-vision here. <laughs> so we're going to wipe our rims, get anything sticky off of it, and we're going to use my four jars canning lids. I have a coupon code in the description of this video if you want 10% off of your canning lids. Make sure you check that out. And then we're going to process these half pints of jelly in the water bath canner for 10 minutes. It's really simple. And foraged items free from around the property gave us five little half pints of jelly that are just so wonderful. This is just an amazing addition to the pantry, something that you can't find in the store. I love canning things like that. Now we're going to get to work using up those mulberries that we also foraged for. I have um, about three cups of flour here. I added a cup and a half of sugar a tablespoon of baking powder and a little bit of salt and we're just going to mix that together. And then I'm going to add two cups of almond milk. You could add any kind of milk that you wanted to. A little bit of vanilla extract. We're going to mix that batter all together and then I'm just going to grease up a baking dish here. It's really simple. I love making fruit cobbler. I've made this many times for you guys. It's something you can whip up in about 10 minutes and it's just super easy to make any kind of fruit works on this. We're just putting those fresh mulberries on top and then we're going to bake this in the oven on 375 for about 40 minutes or so. And we have a really easy dessert to have with dinner. I also like to make this sometimes for breakfast and serve it with some scrambled eggs. So a really great way to use up those mulberries. Something else that has come out of our garden lately is zucchini. We have tons of zucchini now growing and I need to come up with ways to use that. So I'm going to make zucchini pie. I'm starting here by grinding down some fresh wheat berries and then we're sifting it out because when I make a pie crust, I like to use a sifted flour. And you can see the sifter here just removes all of the bran and the germs so that I get what's more, what's like an all purpose flour. Now we're going to work on shredding up this zucchini. I grow a lot of zucchini, but we are, my children are just not fans of zucchini as like a side dish, as a vegetable. We will sometimes use a veggie spiralizer to turn the zucchini into noodles, or we'll use it layered up in maybe a lasagna. But otherwise, I primarily grow zucchini just to use in desserts, in things like zucchini bread or zucchini muffins, or what I'm going to show you here zucchini pie. This is a pie, a sweet pie, just like any other fruit pie, but you're going to use zucchini for your fruit. My flour is all done, so I added three cups of this freshly sifted flour, uh, a little bit of salt, just maybe a half a teaspoon of salt. We're going to add three-fourths a cup of lard here, and then a fourth a cup of a liquid. You could use a milk or water, anything like that. And we are just going to make a basic pie crust here for our zucchini pie. And I'm just going to get my hands in there and kind of work it together. Um, and I'm making a little larger than a traditional pie, which is why I use three cups of flour. Typically, I would use two cups, but I'm trying to fill a whole cast iron skillet with this recipe 
Um, so I'm making a little bigger of a crust here. We're gonna put that down on the bottom. And uh, you guys, I don't make pretty pies. It's just not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on my pie making skills, but we're getting that pie crust into the cast iron pan. Now we're going to work on that pie filling. That was two cups of shredded zucchini. I also added two cups of sugar and a little bit of vanilla extract. We also added two eggs and I'm adding one can of coconut cream. You could use evaporated milk. You could use a regular dairy-based cream. And then just about another half cup of flour to thicken it a little bit. And that is what we poured into our pie shell here. Now I'm going to make a crumble for the top. I've added about a cup or so of flour, a little bit of lard and sugar in there. And we're just kind of mixing that together. I realized I wanted a little more lard. And I'm just making a simple crumble here to just sprinkle over the top and that it will be the topping for our pie. I covered it with aluminum foil and baked it on about 350 for maybe 40 minutes and then took the foil off until it started to brown up. And the lighting is pretty terrible in my kitchen so you can't really tell from that angle. I'm trying to move the camera so you get a better picture of what it looks like. But it browns on the top and... You guys, hear me out. I know zucchini pie, it sounds terrible, but it tastes, uh, my children described it like a pumpkin pie. It's the same texture as a pumpkin pie, but it's sweet. We didn't obviously add the pumpkin pie spices, so it just kind of has a, a sweet pie texture. And, and, and the kids absolutely love this. They said, will you make it again? And I harvested two more zucchini later in the week, so we are going to do it one more time. The next time I actually might try adding some pumpkin pie spices because one of the children thought that that would be good. And I think that if you took your shredded zucchini and you put it in the food processor to blend it up, that might make it even more like a pumpkin pie texture. So there you go. There's an idea for how to use the zucchini that is now starting to come in from the garden. I know you end up with an abundance of it. And if you've never thought of making a sweet pie out of that zucchini, Give it a try, you're really gonna love it. Okay, my son David is working on making some donuts for Benjamin's birthday breakfast. And I thought I would, um, while he's making that, talk a little bit about how the pantry challenge is going. So as you guys know, this is the first time I've documented the pantry challenge over the month of June here. And there is definitely a reason why I prefer to do a pantry challenge in the winter. Um, I usually do it in January and February, and it's because I'm much less busy during that time of the year. And it's a lot easier to be very intentional about the food and to do more complicated recipes and baking and things. I'm finding it very difficult in the month of June because I'm so busy with the garden that my energy in the kitchen is just, there's much less energy there. So meals are becoming very boring. Um, I guess not boring for us. They're very delicious, but um, it's just boring to document for you guys. We're just doing a lot of scrambled eggs for breakfast, we're doing a lot of snacky lunches. And then dinner has pretty consistently been grilled meat with a fresh salad from the garden or whatever ever other vegetables are available. So I'll try to share some new meals, but for now that is just kind of how it's going. As I mentioned, little Benji here turned three this week. He is um, bo he was born on the summer solstice on the sunniest day of the year, and he is definitely sunshine in our lives, and we were very happy to celebrate him. And that's it here at Three Rivers Homestead. We'll be back next week with more videos. Have a blessed week, friends. Bye.